Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take a departure from talking about makeup and skincare to talk about my super awesome dating life in Toronto. Um, I have been dating for about 25 years and um, yeah, it's been horrific and traumatic, especially dating in my 30s. So I don't know. At one point I thought that as you get older you'd be the pool would be a little bit smaller, but men would be grown up and respectful and mature, but um, you proved me wrong, universe. You proved me wrong. So I have five stories about how super fun it's been this year, and um, yeah, please indulge me. So you know, I get hit on, like I, I work in Roxdale, and I don't have a big social life, so the main time I seem to get hit on is on the Rexdale bus, um, which is very interesting, but those are stories in itself. And since I don't have a real means of meeting people other than the old 73C via Albion Road and Clareport, I feel like I have no choice but to go online. Um, so yeah, I've tried out a couple websites. I've been online dating since I was 25 and back in those times you, I found you would actually meet some interesting people, but I'm not going to get into that. So a bunch of guys I chatted with, but these are the top five. These are the top five. So the first one was somebody I met for breakfast, which I do appreciate because I love um, quick, no pressure dates, especially during the daytime because there's just, there's no sexual connotations and there's no pressure for drinking and stuff like that. So I was glad when he agreed to a breakfast date and him being a bit older, that seemed to be his speed anyways. But okay, so he was like way older than what he said. It turns out he was 63 when I showed up on the date. And um, yeah, okay, so that's fine, I guess. Um, way out of my dating range. Yeah, so, and he certainly was 63. He got Splenda for his coffee and poached eggs and like barely ate any of it. And he kind of treated me not like a grown woman, but he just almost, I felt like, he, you know, anything I talked about, he almost wanted to pat me on the head and say like, that's cute. Uh, so there definitely was a power imbalance there. Uh, but it was, like, it was okay. I, I was kind of done because the lie, lying is a bit weird. Uh, but anyways, so then I get an email from him saying, like, it was really nice to meet you. Um, I really want to see you naked. Um, those were his words verbatim. And okay, like, sidebar, I'm getting this email at 10.30 a.m. because this was a breakfast date, so... Everything about that was weird. Naked. Like really? Is this the game these days? Is this the game that somebody who's been alive on this earth for 63 years is bringing? Like, mm, okay. Anyways, the second one, and by the way, that's the only person I even went on a date with. The other four stories were just like too horrific to even get to that phase. So the second guy seemed sort of normal. We're having like normal-ish conversations, a bit too status quo for me, but you never know. People hold back a bit, that's fine. And, but he just, he was one of those people that was presuming way too much and we hadn't even met. Like he was just like, how did I get so lucky to be talking to a girl like you? Which A, seems like a weird line and B, makes me think that you're absolutely delusional and that like really weirds me out. So I started to draw back a bit but he wanted to meet up, and I'm kind of like, oh, okay, you know, like, can't hurt, famous last words, lol. Um, so he's like, <laughs> he, and he asked me where I lived and everything, which comes into play. So he's like, do you want to come to my neighborhood for dinner? And I'm like, okay, that's kind of, like, rude um, to ask somebody to come to your neighborhood. Like, if you want to make an impression, you should be considerate of you know, the, the woman. I'm sorry, maybe that's old-fashioned, but that's how I, I see things. And I asked him where he lives. It turns out he lives in Richmond Hill. Um, okay, like, uh, okay, so you know I live like 30 kilometers. Sorry, I don't even totally know where Richmond Hill is, to be honest. Is it, 
It's at least 20 kilometers away. It's off the subway line. Um, and what's happening there that that would be the place to have a first date anyways? So I just wrote back and I'm like, Ugh. like I, I don't even have a car. So it would take me like two hours to get to Richmond Hill. And he's like, oh, sorry, I thought you had a car, which is weird. Why would you think I have a car? It's it just everything about it was so bizarre. Um, so like, bye, like that's just so t inconsiderate to me. Um, and it's just, it's weird. It's weird. So the next story is, um, oh my gosh, these people, maybe I, I don't know, law of attraction, like what's inside of me that's attracting this? I would love to know. So the next guy was just like, just a classic, um, normal conversation, not normal conversation, but like boring AF conversation and just putting in no effort. Just one of those dudes was like, hey, how was your day? And at first I actually share how my day was and then ask how his day was, long or like busy. So it's just like, I'm sorry, but that's so boring. I want to kill myself. So I, again, lost interest and I really lost I, I just didn't even write him back after he wrote me and just said, so do you have any sexy pics? Done. Done. Where did people learn this? Like, why, A, like, I'm a middle-aged woman. Why do I have sexy pics on my phone? I have pictures of cats, gifts my friends have sent me on Facebook that end up in my camera roll, and that's about it. So, it's like, what? What? Who? Oh, ugh. I can't even. I can't even use words anymore um i'm a real human being looking for an actual connection i don't know how i woke up one day in this weird sartre blade runner garbage world um oh it's so strange to me are these not real human beings i don't even understand what's going on so two more to go bear with me the next one is um, another one that like the planning was so strange to me and rude that it didn't go through. So again, we're having like this one I was actually having like slightly good conversation with. I've like, I have lowered the bar. Like my life is like customer service, riding the transit. Like I just, my bar right now is so depressingly low and I'm so starving for you know, deeper human connection and uh, yeah. So anyways, sad me going back to that. So we again made a, a breakfast date. I'm so lame. So we make a breakfast date and it's like a date, set date, like Thursday at 10 a.m. We are meeting at this restaurant. Done. Good. It's Wednesday night. I go to see a movie starring Christopher Lambert um, and obviously don't check my phone because it's a po post-apocalyptic world and Christopher Lambert is going to save us from it. So other than the, you know, etiquette that you don't have your phone on the theater, I also needed to focus on Christopher Lambert 100%. And in the movie too was like the dad from that 70s show. So I was engrossed. I was fully involved. But what I didn't know is I got two messages from this guy when I was trying to watch Christopher Lambert save the world. The first one was, can you please message me and confirm tomorrow? Which seemed weird because it's like, uh, we already have confirmed tomorrow, but okay, like that's fine. And then the next message was like less than two hours later saying like, you know what? Like I didn't hear from you, so let's just do this another time, but I'm going out of town, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what in the what? So I just wrote back and I'm like, hey, like I was in a movie, so I didn't even actually get these messages, but you know what, mm, I'm good. And then I got like the classic kind of defensive, like, well, I'm like, my daughter's coming into town, I wanna hang out with her, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, that's totally cool. That's totally cool. But why wasn't your message, hey, I know we have plans, but my daughter's coming into town, do you mind if we reschedule? Why wasn't it that? Why was it a weird, like, Oh, I guess you don't reply. So like, uh, okay, okay. And then I'm just like, no problem. If you just told me that, it wouldn't be cool. And then he writes back being like, good luck in the, <laughs> it's always good luck or like all the best. Good luck in the future. And you might want to be more tolerant 
in the future and it's like okay anyways like this is now about tolerance like okay anyways next last story was just it's just sad i'm just sad at the state of a lack of respect for women so i was chatting with this guy and he uh like he seemed nice like he actually seemed thoughtful he was considerately asking me questions and showing signs of sensitivity and thoughtfulness and then he just totally veered into an area that made no sense to me um like we were kind of talking about relationshipy things and he asked me what i was looking for and i'm like i'm you know i'm looking for somebody that i can trust and feel safe with and like blah, 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 blah. and he writes back absolutely but when somebody gets there with you are you crazy in bed i give up i give up i just give up and i just didn't write back he sent me three more messages finally asking me like did i do something wrong and i'm like hey like i'm just really not looking for that and he basically just said like i should expect that because men are curious about sex okay 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 wow wow so yeah um i have to be more tolerant apparently and i need to give in to people's curiosity about sex even when it's disrespectful um so you know all this is on me so thank you guys so much for teaching me these lessons also just you know flashing back to the 63 year old who said he wanted to see me naked and i was just like wow that's uncouth he wrote back a defensive reply being like i'm just being honest so i really want to thank all these men for teaching me amazing character traits like honesty tolerance um appeasing curiosity it's a new one to me but you know thank you you guys are just you're so such beautiful lessons so from the bottom of my heart I, I deeply thank you and of course I wish you all the best in your future endeavors so I apologize if that that was too ranty for you but thank you for listening and if any of you are going through the pain I'm going through I am sending you lots and lots of love and namaste